Normally I don't fancy black, but when I've heard that they've developed a black as dark as outer space, that's when I got curious. Welcome to Caseback Watches, my name is Tim and our topic today is the Venezianico Redentore Ultra Black. And to really value that piece we have to speak a bit about black. What's black? Well it's easy to explain when we see other colors. If you take for example white, yellow, blue, all these are compositions of light. A composition of different length, wavelength. This creates together a certain color. And the interesting fact now is that black is the opposite. It's the absence of light. So when a surface absorbs light, doesn't reflect any form of light, then you have a black tone. And that's the reason why many people say that black isn't even a color. Although science now counts it as a color, but again it's the absence of light that forms black. And on planet Earth it's very hard to find a perfect black. Even if you imagine a very dark cast shadow, you will always have some reflected light into that shadow so it's not longer perfect. But if you imagine yourself, uh, um, let's say, behind the moon and you cannot see the sun, there you have a nearly perfect black. You could argue now, well, you have reflected light from other planets and stars, but there, these distances are so big that in outer space you really have that black. And now certain industries have developed ultra black for the daily use here on planet Earth. And I think you have heard the term Vanta black because you've seen it on watch styles, Vanta black. And Vanta is an abbreviation and it stands for Vertically Aligned Nanotube Array. And it was developed 2014. So we have nanotubes and they don't reflect light. And the, the result here is that these, these panes absorb 99% of every incoming light. So you have an ultra black because absence again, absence of light. And now we see a bit of a race between manufacturers, between, between developers who can make the blackest black, the deepest black. And we have some, some numbers here between 99.3%, 99.7%. Um, the sources are a bit indifferent, the sources are a bit contradictory uh, sometimes, but what we find now are super super black colors that can be used for watches for example. And here our Venezianico, they use Muso black and this black absorbs 99.4% of incoming light, so a super super black color. And these colors are extremely, extremely expensive. And But we have here a rather affordable watch. The Redentore has a retail price of 500 euros. And so how is that possible? And I think the explanation is you need only your three to four to five drops for every watch dial. And that, that's the calculation behind that. And now let's go to our watch. The Redentore Ultra Black was very, very popular when they launched it. First they sold several hundreds of that relatively affordable and stunning watch and now they are preparing the next batch. And this is the reason why they asked me if I want to yeah, check out a piece and I said immediately, immediately yes because I'm sort of a space buff and I'd like to see it with my own eyes. Is black or can a very dark black look interesting or not? And so let's find out in the light box right now. And there we have it. There we have our black watch. This is what I really call a black watch. Venezianico Redentore Ultra Black. Let's go over the specifications. First we have a case diameter here of 40 millimeters. Length lug to lug is 48. Height is 12 millimeters. Lug width 20. We have a not screwed on crown, so normal crown. Sapphire crystal and a water resistance of 100 meters. And the price here is handy and easy. It's 500 euros. So without VAT converted into US dollars you are around, I think you are around the 400, yeah the 400 US dollar mark. Let's clean it a bit. There is a bit of dust on the crystal. And now let's examine the dial. You may note when you have a certain angle here you cannot see the hands very good. Reduced usability. Interestingly, I've never experienced that while wearing the watch because you always move it around a bit and so it was not so much of a problem. And then when you have these angles here, then it really, really shines. 
if you expose it to strong light source or daylight even, then it really shines. And my biggest surprise was how interesting it is to look at that dial. First I thought, okay, it, it's well designed with these minimalistic hands and the Venezianico sign there, but I thought maybe it's a bit boring after a while, but it's pretty interesting. There is really some flair on this dial and you may note it's, it's rather big because you don't have a bezel. You don't have a bezel, you have lots of room for this dial to shine and to give you this Ashmosa vibe for a fraction of the price, of course. And so this I like pretty much. Did I mention the movement? This is a Seiko movement, Seiko NH35A. Here you see the case back with the satellite on it. Nice satellite. The case is pretty advanced, by the way. You have, of course, this engraving, then you have these screws here, high polished, high polished curves, crown guards, the sides are brushed, bezel high polished again, and I really like the fit of the, the sapphire crystal here, it looks very good. The only thing I find is that the case overall is a bit too much for, for the watch. I'd love to see that watch with a rather, yeah, with a rather curved, curved and minimalistic case without crown guards, maybe entirely high polished, maybe more the form of a lens, so to speak. But okay, they had another idea and at the end it's taste, but I feel this is a bit too much metal for the dial. And it comes on this leather strap here, black strap, I don't know what to tell you about it, um, it's just a basic, basic, well-working, well-matching strap and yeah, that's it basically. But now let's operate the watch. The Seiko movement allows hand winding function. Very creamy and you have a ghost position, I've noted that. Ghost position, position one here. Hmm. Bit of a shame, but all right, it's, it's a very affordable watch. And position two then is for the hands. Works fine, works with good Seiko quality, hackable movement here. And so that's all I can tell you about how to operate that watch. And now let's put it on the wrist. And there you go, 40 millimeters on my 17 centimeter wrist. Pretty dominant and big watch. But already now you may notice that the legibility is way better now on the wrist than in front of a camera with a close-up. This is very strange. I don't understand this so good, to be honest. But here you can see it. We can go out, by the way, and then we check it in broad daylight and then you can see the difference. And so my personal verdict, colored by my taste, really is way more interesting than expected, way more interesting than expected, with a little minus that the case is a bit too brutalistic for me personally, but all the other elements are there and I love the, the brave decision to create a dial like that without stuff on it, without the, the name of the brand, without um, some other indications here, just black, just this Musso black that stands for itself. So very nice. And now let's go back. And now let's speak briefly about availability. Venezianico told me beginning of May or early May these watches will be available again on their website. All right, and now let's carry on as always with your images. And I really have some candy here. Let's begin with a Robert from New York City. And he writes, Quartz needs love too. The incredible accuracy of the Citizen plus minus five seconds a year is what sparked my interest. The case and bracelet are specially coated titanium, extremely light and scratch resistant. All of the design elements combine to make this a true G-A-D-A piece. Possibly a OWC one watch collection. What do you think? 
Well, I think you're cheating a bit, my friend, because you're presenting us that watch with an insane combination with that suit and that shirt. Very interesting fabric, by the way, that shirt. And it really shows that you can, that, that the combination makes it, that you can combine a relatively simple, neat watch with nice garments, and then you think, wow, stunning look. And Robert has sent another watch. And here again, you have a Grand Seiko, the SBGP017. And he writes, apparently I'm having a love affair with quartz these days. And yeah, again, again, marvelous combination. I mean, this marvel dial there in combination with polished steel and these fabrics, just insane, crazy. So congratulations and thank you very much for these great images. And the next watch comes from Kane and he writes, a nice day after a week of rain in Portsmouth, UK. In front of me is the Spinnaker Tower and the dry dock of HMS Victory, the ship commanded by Horatio Nelson. And there again, we see one of my favorite watch brands, Longines. This chronometer, this size, the look, the bracelet, the overall design, the price, it's just a perfect all-rounder, that watch. And I featured Longines um, a lot of times on this channel and really for a reason. And I think many of you can agree that this can be a perfect watch, perfect for, uh, watch for the money. So, Kane, thank you very much for sending this in. And our last image is also very interesting. It comes from the United States and here you see a Mont Blanc. And it comes from Patrick from Tennessee. And he writes, when I first saw a picture of this watch online a few years ago, I knew it was the watch for me. This is absolutely my style. Unfortunately, it sold out quickly back in 1999, but I managed to find a very slightly used one in perfect condition. Yeah, Mont Blanc watches are rarities here on the channel and I think in general they're very special and I think some people are afraid that they lose value because it's not the super wanted brand, but if you really like it and love it and if you have searched for it and then you can grab it, I think this is a perfect scenario. And this watch looks pretty special, pretty special. So I would free myself from this thinking, is it wanted by other people or not? If you want to buy it, if you enjoy it, then just do it, right? I think this is uh, the best advice I can give here. And so, Patrick, thanks a lot for sending this in. And dear viewer, if you want to participate here with your watches, your site, your hometown, your, your area you find great and you want to share, then please use casebackwatches at iCloud.com. And that's the end of this video now. Um, it was a pleasure as always, dear watch lovers. And now I'm rambling a bit because I forgot my text for, for the outro. But okay, then let's meet here next Friday. Thank you very much for your attention. And that's it now, I think. Yes. Thank you.